of what the old saints used to do because they didn't have all of that eight ways. But they had revival. They had healing. They had deliverance. When demons showed up, they, they knew how to drive that thing out. When things were troubled in their home, they knew how to call on the name of Jesus. We want to call on Oprah Winfrey. We want to call on Obama. We want to call on, but they can't help us. I said, they can't, there's no hope in them. They're not salvation. They're not healing. They're not deliverance. They're not God. But at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. At the name of Jesus, every struggle, every challenge, every trial you face submits to that name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is lifted. Lifted high. Lifted. Oh, the name of Jesus is lifted. I this lift your hands tonight and sing the name of Jesus is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a demonstration of wirecast. Lift our voice and we say the name of Jesus is lifted. Oh, lifted.
Wirecast. Kindle, come. Kagan. Kindle. Come, Kagan, come. Thank you, Jesus. Brandon. Michelle. Thank you, Jesus. This is a demonstration just just pray of the Christian things for a moment. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we give you freedom to do what you want to do in this room. Take your liberty. Take your liberty, Jesus. Name of Jesus, lift it high. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. My name is Kendall. I'm uh, 19 from uh, Edwards, Illinois. Jeez. Um, this is God's a delivered me from of so Wirecast. many things. I mean, I'm just, I'm not any bit like the person I used to be, but uh, a long time ago, um, I was, uh, I, I was diagnosed with uh, ADHD, bipolar, and depression, and um, I, I was started on medications at a very young age, at about eight years old. And it started me on this just long path of, of uh, not really knowing myself because I thought that, because I, I just heard that I was this person that, that needed these things and I, and I wasn't, and I didn't feel complete. I felt this void in me and I felt like this no matter what I did, I would never find cast. the true me and I would never feel this, this emptiness inside of me because I just need, I needed to rely on something else. I never had a family that, that was complete. Um, my mom, she divorced and remarried. She never got married to my dad, but she divorced and remarried three times. Uh, one, one to a, um, an abusive father, one to a paranoid schizophrenic, and um, another time to a, uh, pretty much a control freak. And um, it just, it didn't give me that feeling of family, family. So I would, I would turn to other things this to fill that void inside of me. I would turn to other cast. things to, to, um, to. to to stop that vo the voices inside my head that told me I was nothing, that told me I would never amount to anything. I would end up just like my father, that I would just complete, continue down this road of destruction until I died and there was no hope. But I, I didn't want that to be. Inside of me, I knew there was something more. I knew that, that I had a calling greater than that, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the consistency because all I ever knew was chaos. All I ever knew was destruction. All I ever knew was uh, everything that people had told me that I was. This is a demonstration how, how can you of live Wirecast. Just going off of what other people tell you that you are. You know, you, you start, you hear those lies so many times, you start to believe them. And it just, it, it brought me to drugs because, because drugs shut that voice up inside of my head. Drugs were the only thing that I could find temporary relief. Yeah, it was just a band-aid, but you know what? It, it, it helped me live with who I was or so I thought. Because I didn't want—I didn't want to live, to be honest with you. I just—it um, got to the point in my life this where um, I was of so broken that I just—I just would rather um, God just take me away rather than than stay on this earth. And um, I, I got involved in in, in cocaine, um, in marijuana, uh, hallucinogens. I mean, I did the whole thing—heroin, uh, methamphetamines, everything. But nothing filled it. Nothing made me satisfied with who I was. Nothing gave me purpose, gave me passion to live. And then one night I, I um, was invited to go to this a service a um, by my aunt at the last minute. Cast. Literally, as she was walking out the door, um, she invited me to go to an Eddie James service. And um, this, was, this was early October of last year. And I, I got to this. I got to the service, and and I remember just seeing all the all the people around, and you know they're they're worshiping. I'd never really. I'd grown up in a, in, a, in a kind of a Pentecostal, uh, not Pentecostal, but Presbyterian church, so it was very traditional. Um, so I wasn't used to all the jumping up and down and things like that. But I, it was new. It was it was um, and it was exciting, 
And as I was, um, you know, standing there and listening to these awesome Wirecast. songs, I just uh, realized that God was, was was moving in on me. He had his hand over me. And um, he was just breaking away things. I, I, I came there hardened because I, didn't, I, I was still convinced that nothing would work. But as the service went on and as they, they gave their testimonies, as I heard these songs, layers just started to fall off. I became vulnerable. And, I, and not only did I became vulnerable, I saw hope because I saw the, the, the look in these people's eyes and, and this you know, this, this feeling of belonging, this feeling of family that I'd never felt in my entire life. I never felt that true feeling of a family. And they spoke of this man, Jesus, and how that if you were to surrender to him, to give him everything, that he would, you would be free, completely free. I would never have to, to worry about the, the, you know, the house I broke into, that, that, the, one of the worst decisions of my life that ended me up with a felony on my record. I never would have to worry about all the times I stole from my family and, and stepped all over them and all the times I lied and the compulsion to lie and, and to deceive and all the, just, just the rotten human being that I thought I was. It would be gone. And I, did, <laughs> I was just, and I was in awe. I was struck in awe. And he and I came. They, he did an altar call, and I came to the to the to the altar, and I just remember, it just broke, and I said, God, just take me, take me everything that I have, everything that I've done, it's yours. I just want you to do with me what you want. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want. I, I don't want to continue down this path. It's just going to lead to death, because that's all it is. The wage of sin is death. And I had sinned a lot. And I just, I'm so thankful. Every ounce of me. I'm not a single bit like the person I used to be. I am not, not an ounce of me. Not from the way I talk to the way I think to the very thoughts in my head or not a single bit like the person I used to be. Today, I don't strive to be like, like my friends, to, to, to strive for that acceptance from them because I want him to be happy with me. I this want him to be happy with me. And that's all I can. That's that's all I can ever ask. That's all I can ever ask. That's all I got. Oh yeah, I, and I just want to pray over you guys. Lord, I just come before you. I'm just so humbled beneath your presence, God, beneath your just awesome power. Lord, there is not, not a single person in this room that has a bondage on them that you cannot reach, that your hand is not, not, not long enough to reach, God. Lord, and I just, I lift your name up on high, God. I say that you are all powerful. There's not a single thing that you can't do, God. And you are just, oh, God. And I just want, I just ask this that you just come into this place, pour your glory and your presence upon your pe your people here, God. These are your children, Lord. And I just ask that you just, you just bring the spirit of conviction that, that as we send our mess, give our message and as more give their testimonies, that it just begins to just 